hey guys welcome to digital screeny channel on youtube and if you haven't already done so please go ahead pause this video right now subscribe to this channel in this video let's uh, put together a real time detector for facial emotion age and gender what do we mean by that well it's going to get a live feed from our webcam and going to put uh, our printout something that you see on the screen right now right is this uh, what is the emotion is that a uh, male or a female and what is the predicted age and we are going to use the tools that we have built in the last three videos towards this meaning in the first uh, video or let's start with the last one right so in the last video we trained a model that can or a couple of models for age and gender and the one before that we trained a model that uh, detects facial emotion and the one before that we used OpenCV to detect faces and then features inside faces like for example eyes so the plan here is to start with detecting faces and crop the detected face and use that as input towards our facial emotion or age or gender uh, detection and obviously eventually print out on uh, the screen live in real time as the feed goes on. With that background information, let's go ahead and jump into the code. The code is not as complicated because we have already put in the work in the last few videos in getting the tools and getting the mo uh, models that we need for this video. So let's directly jump in. Okay, so here we need to import our models first. What models do we need? One, to detect the face. And we know that from OpenCV Cascade Classifier, we have the frontal face uh, detection. This helps us detect the face, and then we'll crop the face to be used for the next step, which is emotion detection. So we need to load the emotion detection model. And we have, I think these numbers are wrong. I haven't changed this, right? So 100 epochs and 50 epochs and 50 epochs. So we trained our emotion detection for 100 epochs and we trained our age model for 50 epochs and we trained our gender model for 50 epochs and we saved these uh, files. So let's start by loading our libraries. And we don't need many. We just need our uh, Keras, you know, load model and then image to array because that's exactly what we used before. When you load an image, you convert that into an array. So we're going to use that, uh, you know, right there. And uh, pre-processing uh, and uh, OpenCV, NumPy, that's it. And now let's go ahead and load the face classifier. There you go. So we have that. And now let's load the emotion model, 100 epochs, great age model and gender model this is again nothing nothing new here right so you this is standard steps that we do all the time next let's define our class labels for emotion model right i mean because what gets printed what gets predicted is a value between zero to six for all these seven classes zero one two three four five six we need to convert that into angry or discuss so we can print that on the screen so that's exactly why we need class labels and also the same reason for gender labels zero for male one for female yeah so let's go ahead and load that this part three videos ago we loaded the video and we detected the face this is exactly the same yeah exactly the same except instead of detecting eyes after detecting the face, we are detecting emotion, age, and gender. That's it. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'm using OpenCV to capture the video, and this is the only input source I have for camera. So, I'm using Video Capture Zero. Uh, and while the camera is alive, that's like while true, go ahead and uh, the frame is my image, right? So, when you do cap.read, the frame is your image. And then uh, my I convert that image into grayscale image. Yeah, this is what we use for detecting the faces. And that's exactly what we are doing. Face classify and detect multi-scale. And uh, why multi-scale? Because I can be very close, I can be far away. The face can be small or big, so multi-scale. And it also detects multiple faces. If you have five people, it detects, it returns an array of five by four because four corners and five images or five five faces i should say um so that's what the faces would return and for x y w and h these are the coordinates 
right? X, Y, and uh, sorry, I, I keep saying four corners when I say uh, it's, re it's returning four values. It's actually the diagonally opposite. X, Y is the top left and W, H is the width and height. So if you do X plus W and Y plus H, you get the other corner, but it's returning these four. So for each of these in our faces, we are going to draw a rectangle in blue color. Yeah, blue, green, red, right? Uh, with a pencil size of two and where? x, y, and x plus w, y plus h, like I just mentioned, the diagonally opposite uh, right there. So we're going to draw a rectangle, but that's not it. We are going to now extract a smaller region of interest, which is nothing but the region of interest of my face, right? Gray is nothing but my grayscale image. Within that grayscale image array, I get a subset of an array going from y to y plus h and x to x plus w. So now I have my face cropped or extracted or defined. And then I'm going to take this ROI gray and resize it to 48 by 48. Why? Because that's what my emotion detection model got trained on. Remember all the images in the data set that we got were 48 by 48. So we trained it on 48 by 48. So my model expects an input size of 48. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So that's the resize part. And then we divide this by 255 because we scaled those images by dividing them by 255. That's what we are doing here. And then we convert that into uh, an array and expand the dimensions. So the, the array it has the right dimensions uh, for prediction, which is N, X, Y, and number of channels, right? You know that. And then it's ready for model.predict. What model? We are going to use our emotion model right there, right? So model.predict. That's exactly what we are doing right there, model.predict. Once you do the prediction, the output is going to be a one hot encoded uh, array of uh, seven, size seven, because we have seven different classes. So we need to go ahead and perform argmax. So we get the maximum probability uh, value, which is our prediction. And then I'm looking at that in my class labels. If my prediction is two, what is my two? Zero, one, two, two is fear. That's exactly what I'm trying to do here, class labels. And then print the class label onto my image, which is first of all, extract the position, class label position, I mean, define the class label position. So I defined X, Y, meaning at the top left, go ahead and print happy, sad, whatever that is. And that's what that is. So we are done with emotion right there. Very simple, right? I mean, once you have the trained models, this is, this is not that difficult. The next step is gender, very similar path. Our gender model expects an input of 200 by 200. So go ahead and take your input image and then convert, change the size to 200 by 200 and then model.predict, yeah, uh, by on the reshaped uh, image. And once you do model.predict, you get like a probability and anything, we are setting a threshold of 0 0.5 and that's my prediction. Prediction is not just enough, we need to find out what the label is because my prediction would be either zero or one. So if it is zero, uh, it is uh, gender, right? It is male, if it is one, it is female. That's what we are defining right there. And then where to print that? Well, print it at X and Y plus H plus 50. So apparently I'm printing it at the bottom and I'm pushing it 50 pixels out so it doesn't overlap with any, any real things. That's what that is. This is just a position. You can define whatever position you want. And that's the position that goes in there. And print it onto the frame. Frame is nothing but our uh, RGB image, uh, our frame rate, I mean the, the video feed. Next, similarly, predict age. How do you predict age? Your age model dot predict and your, uh, your image right there, yeah? And then uh, for, for this prediction, this is a regression type of problem. So the prediction can be 35.22 or something. So I'm just rounding it right there. So round it to 35 basically, and then print it out onto the screen, show it using OpenCV, that's it. This is very simple. <laughs> yeah, in about seven, eight minutes, we kind of went through the entire code, which is only 70 lines. And if in fact, I have way too many uh, white spaces right there. This is, uh, this is, this is pretty simple for what it does. So let's see how this works out. Now for that, let me go ahead and uh, remove stop the video here because the I need the camera for this other task. So let me continue this in a second. 
Okay, I'm here, you can't see me yet, but I'll pop up any second. So let's run the entire code and wait for the camera to show up and then see what it prints out. Okay, there you go, that's uh, real time and the age is jumping between 30 to 40. I'm definitely in my mid 40s, uh, in fact, past mid 40s. So I'm flattered by what the age, what, you know, the age it's trying to uh, predict here. But my age model, like I said uh, in my uh, last video, it can be a bit challenging for age, uh, you know, to predict the age using 200 by 200 pixel uh, images. Even otherwise, it can be challenging because everyone, uh, for most people, age doesn't show in the face, right? I mean, you can't you can't guess it. That's not that easy. Um, male and female also, you know, depending on the angle, depending on uh, a bunch of things, you know, that can jump back and forth. But hopefully, it shows male for the most part. And uh, whether it is angry or sad, it looks like I'm very angry right now talking to you guys, but there you go, I fixed it. Uh, so uh, now you know how to build this, you know, how to put all of these together, the knowledge from the last three videos, you know, into, uh, into one, uh, one piece of code that can take the live feed, look at individual frame by frame, and, uh, and, and uh, put all the information together. In the next video, let's uh, continue this exercise, but let's save this Keras model as a TensorFlow Lite model and, uh, and uh, do the inference right on the Windows system. And the one after that would be the, uh, would be the Raspberry Pi, okay? Thank you guys, and let's meet again in the next video.